So here's an update video to our uh, about year old video now of how our truck set up. Uh, we just recently took it on a big trip, so this is fully loaded out, how we took it. Uh, we'll tell you about it, what we like about it, what we don't like about it, what we've done in the last year or so, and that's basically it. We'll walk around and show you what we like, and, and you can let us know if you want to know anything else. It's a little messier than when we started, but we were out on the road for about 10 days, so uh, we tried to keep up with it the best we could. There it is. So the first thing we got here is the, the bumper and the winch. So we really wanted to get the, the bumper and the winch on when we first started, but we have still not used that the winch, not one time. So we don't get ourselves stuck. It's kind of an insurance policy kind of thing, but uh, we like it. It's really good. It works really well. We, we undo it every once in a while, make sure it, it tests it and stuff. Haven't used it. Light bars are really freaking cool because we actually use those a couple times, uh, especially down forest roads, down to really dark campgrounds. We used them uh, at the river road in Big Bend. You know, it's about a five hour trip in the, uh, in the nighttime. So people knock uh, light bar, stuff like that. But if you're ever in the dark, you need them for sure. And the bumper we've used. Uh, we knocked down a couple of trees actually. Yeah, so on the, on, the, on the real narrow trails, stuff like that, if you get a, a tree a, a couple inches wide, you can just push them over instead of having to get out and cut them down. Uh, here you, you can trim up uh, uh, roads and stuff like that that are overgrown. It's allowed, as far as I know. Uh, some areas it's not, so I wouldn't recommend that for everybody. Uh, Tires still got the Nitto trail grapplers and the mud trains. They've worked really well. I don't know if I'm going to go with them again. I might get all trains, not sure. But aired down, uh, they work really well. About 25 pounds, you can drive them on the road or the, the, the trail. So uh, they've worked out really well. Still want to get uh, smaller wheels and thicker tires. So I don't know. I'll switch that up next time. Uh, coming around here. Plasti dip. Here's a year later on Plasti dip on the grill. It's held up pretty well. So here is the big change. Uh, we added the camper shell, truck topper, bed cap, whatever the hell you want to call it. And so we have an awning on here. We have a front runner roof rack. Our cell phone signal booster is up there. That thing also is worth every penny. We camp all the time off grid, or I wouldn't really say off grid. It depends on what you define as off-grid. We camp all the time with no cell phone signal, so it really comes in handy. Over here, we have a Roto pack mount, one water, one diesel. So the reason we have a diesel is because we have a diesel heater that we use on another setup. So since we already have the Roto pack for that, uh, we just take the take it with us because we already had it. We didn't buy it. I think a, a two-gallon Roto pack in this thing doesn't really help much, but since we already had it, we brought it. Uh, the water Roto pack is really nice. Uh, 23 zero bins so we have two of those tied down with little u-bolts uh, uh, that we we made ourselves uh, those things are really nice because we keep all of our overstock uh, items in there this bin on the 10 days we never even opened other than to check to see if it was waterproof the only reason we keep stuff in there is just in case uh, in case a fridge fails in case uh, we run out of food for whatever reason. In case we get stranded somewhere, we have a bunch of ready to eat meals, stuff like that. So it's another insurance policy, kind of like the winch. We didn't use it, but if we need it, it's really good to have it. We have other sleeping arrangements in there too, like a tent and hammocks and, and sleeping pads and stuff like that. So if somehow it gets wet in there and our bed gets ruined or whatever, then we, we still have somewhere to sleep. Yep. Uh, we did add the rigid lights. They're scene lights. We added them uh, to the rear so that we can see backing up if we have to back up in a trail, backing up in a campground, stuff like that at nighttime. Uh, really helps with that too. Hooking up a trailer when we use trailers, stuff like that. Those really come in handy, recommend the lights for sure. We also, underneath there, right there, we have our Max Tracks mounted and we have a shovel also mounted up there. She's gonna hoist herself up there and show you. Here's the shovel. And we just use um, the rock straps. We just crisscross them and it works perfect. They don't move at all. Another upgrade we have from last time that is worth it is a propane uh, uh, fireplace, fire, fire pit, pit. Propane, propane fire, fire pit. pit. So we like that because 
uh, places have fire bans, plus you have to deal with wood whenever you're, you know, freezing cold, don't want to deal with it, stuff like that. It's uh, like the Outland Fireball, I think is what that one was called or something similar. It's awesome. It's, it's, it's great. It takes five seconds to set up. You don't have to worry about having fire starters or if your fire is going to keep going, stuff like that. So it's just a nice change. So in here is what makes this thing really worth it. This whole setup and everything all together. So we take the, uh, the tailgate down and we have the decked platform with the drawers. So we always keep a stool in here because with this truck. Because I'm short. Yeah, she's short and the truck's tall. So we always keep this little one where you just have to, you know, push down on it. Out of the ladder. So uh, it's easier to climb up in there. Obviously to put the tailgate up, you have to fold the ladder back in though. So we only set that up when we're going in and out all the time. There's our one table. We only use one table ever. So. Yeah, only ever need one table because you can cook on the tailgate. Here's our poles for the awning. We keep them down there so they're easy to get and they don't come flying off on our face because usually you keep them up in the awning, at, in the uh, carry case. And with it being on top, they'll come down. I don't want to knock my teeth out or something. So we keep them in here. Keep the uh, muck boots, one on each side because they fit in there. And then here is our entire cooking system. So Blackstone grill, awesome. In the deck system with the 19 inch grill, if you take the uh, Button. grease, no, the, yeah, the grease trap and the knob off, I put the knob in the grease trap, put the grease trap underneath the uh, grill top and it fits right in here, long ways. Keep an extra green bottle. This is just a um, knife and cutting board set with, uh, I think it has like a rag and stuff too. Yep. Um, Didn't use any, either of these green bottles. Again, we have extra ones up in that bin too. Didn't use them because we have uh, propane, two five pound propane bottles up there that are refillable, uh, easier refillable. Them, yeah. So they let us know when we're running out. Thermometers in here, all our spatulas in here. Uh, right. This stuff is all thrown in here. We don't have any. There's our jet boil. Yep. Yeah, so for cooking for us, a black stone and a jet boil is all we need. That's it. Uh, these are our dirty dishes. Like I said, we just came back from a trip. So uh, aluminum foil. And then back there is our dining bin. So that has extra like forks, silverware, plates, stuff like that. So if we're like uh, tending to more people than just, just us or, or we just have more, we're making a big old fancy meal or something like that, we use it. it has salt, pepper, all that stuff, oil, whatever yeah. you need in there. So I can open this drawer up, take this to there, hook it up. We keep the hose hooked up to the, the propane bottle and be cooking, turned on, heated up, all that stuff in less than five minutes, maybe two minutes. And, and while we're uh, getting everything out, the, the grill top warms up and we're cooking, you know, from the time we stop to the time we want to cook is, you know, five minutes or so. There's really nothing to mess with. And then by the time you get done with the black zone, uh, cooking, cleaning up, all that stuff is about the same time. You let it cool down while you're eating. By the time it's cooled down, it's cleaned up, you put it away and you're done. I mean, this is by far, we've used all kinds of different, uh, uh, cooking systems and the jet boil and the blackstone is by far the easiest for us. This one carries our chairs. We use the click chairs. They are amazing. They take like five seconds to set up. I just all to show you this one. Um, they just you wait. They click into place, and once they click into place, you just pull, and it pops in place. You got to do it four times, and boom, you have a nice, sturdy, comfy chair to sit in. Yeah, love those chairs. So we have three of those. Um, we keep card games, our light covers, so we can convert these scene lights to amber lights so we don't blind ourselves if we want to use them at nighttime. Keep a fan in here, the other chairs. Well, apparently cookies. Yep, cookies. 23-0 lights, here, show that one out. Oh yeah, this one's really nice. It can charge with solar or it can charge USB. Yep. Um, you just pull this out and there's a button right here and you hold it and it turns it on. And then once you turn it off or like even when you're done charging and stuff like that, this thing actually glows in the dark. So you can find it pretty much anywhere. It's pretty sweet. Yep. Um, shower bag, baby wipes, you know, the turlet, turlet paper. Uh, we got an extra little lamp here. We use this usually. We, we stick it on our, uh, our uh, table when we play card games or whatever. Yeah. And I can use that if I cook on a, a picnic table with the black stone and stuff like that. I'll hook it to that. Oh, uh, we keep extra towels in here. Yep. Um, Here's our whole uh, air up, air down kit. So in here we have the, the their speed bleeders, 
Uh, uh, no. Uh, if anybody wants to know what we use to air down, pretty much you, you set it to a pressure, you screw it in the valve, and you pull a little uh, thing out, and it'll air down to that pressure. Those things, it takes about five minutes per tire to air down. It takes about six minutes per tire to air up with the split spinny belt. It has to get from about 20 pounds, 25 pounds, to about 55 pounds. So this thing works freaking perfect. This is just our first aid kit. Uh, we pretty much just made our own of all the stuff that we think we might have needed. Yeah, and this is a Nanuk uh, 904 case if anybody wants to know the exact size. That's a pretty sweet case. Uh, we just have another extra fan in here. Um, this is a, just a bin that I used to use to wash dishes. Sometimes I'll use it, sometimes I won't. It really just depends. Um, and then back there are some backup chairs. Um, if for some reason our other chairs fail, those ones have a higher back too so we can more recline in them. And then this is just a, a blanket with a uh, with a tarp side on it so if we want to like lay out in the grass or dirt or whatever we can. Yep. And that's yep. pretty much it. You stuff it back in there and you slide it right back. See if you can figure out how it's back in there. Boom. Boom. Easy. Yeah, and so then we keep a big bag. So I have a big bag of my clothes still in there. This is, I think, dirty or wet clothes from the beach. One of the two. Uh, she keeps a bag over there. So at night, I push my bag over here. She pushes her bag and stands it up here. And then we fit. Both of them fit long ways because this is a, uh, you know, a regular, regular bed. Six and a half foot bed. Yeah, six and a half foot bed. So it's long enough for both of us. Um, I'm about 5'11", so definitely long enough for me. So then also in here we have, let me now climb in here. So this is a zero degree bag. She also has a zero degree bag. So we keep them fluffed in here. We, we keep them out of the, uh, out of the sides so that they don't rub on the windows and get condensation, stuff like that. Then we also keep a roll of Reflectix. So this one goes to the back window. This one here goes to the side. And then she keeps one over here the same, where she's got one for the front and one for the side. So we keep the tin in here because we set, oh, you covered up the camera. We keep a tin in here because we uh, have a little propane heater there that we can sit on there if we want to warm it up. Didn't use that either but also good to have actually a little blanket to cover up with. And that is basically it inside. So by the time we get, uh, go to sleep, we have all four windows covered up and zero degree bags. So we've had it down to, I think 30 degrees now. And once you close that thing up, I mean, it is warm in there with the I two of us. Most of the time. Yeah, sometimes we sweat. So it's definitely uh also in there we just bought some some usb like led light strips from yep. lowe's they're not very good um but they work for what we need we only need lights for like a couple minutes because sometimes we wake up before the sun comes out or whatever the case is that's a remote control for it it's wired back here and then we just use a, a usb brick like a 10 uh 10 000 milliamp hour brick yeah works out good well, that's uh, cool. what else we got so this is a 270 degree uh the the 230 peregrine peregrine awning so it comes out all the way across and it works out well because it comes to the back and then we put this down when we're setting it up we put this up and it seals the gap in there so that worked out great and it comes all the way to the front and so then in this bin right here we have the walls for it and so we took them out of the bags because it's a huge pain in the ass to get them out of the bags and we got a bin just for that and we have a, a ground tent so in case our mattress oh which i didn't mention here i'm gonna go back so here we have uh this is a trifold four inch memory foam mattress this is like sleeping on a home mattress like you cannot sleep any better than this and then i bring a, a my pillow and she has a memory foam pillow which she doesn't like <laughs> Absolutely. If you have any good recommendations for a new pillow, let me know. Yeah. So it's almost like sleeping at home. I mean, it's just as good. We stayed in a hotel uh, one day on our trip, and I can't say that I slept better in a hotel than I did in the back of the truck. It's pretty awesome. But anyway, so we did that because I can climb up on the tire, unstrap the thing, pull the throw the walls down, strap it back up, and then. Uh, undo the awning and then we can mount the walls we keep the stakes in there and it's so much easier than fighting with those freaking bags they do not fit in the bags so the awning walls come in handy to a lot because um the, a couple of places that we've been with the, them uh it's either been storming um so obviously you get rain protection and then uh it was also super windy one night like so windy we had to 
we had to like tie the walls down to, uh, in a few different places to keep it from caving in but once you got them up it, and it didn't take very long at all but it was like you didn't didn't even know it was windy outside anymore so it's it's awesome yeah the cell phone booster we boost so that thing we use uh i think i said we we use it all the time uh, we have it wired into where we just turn it on and off whenever we need it. It is on a ram mount so I can uh, loosen the nut on there and fold it over so if you need the clearance or once we take the boxes off and, and we know we're not going to be going anywhere crazy, we can just fold it over. Nobody even knows it's there. So in the back seat, uh, this is the daughter's bag. We keep our dry goods, uh, crap to play on the beach we had on there when we went to Texas. This is a hiking bag. We always keep a hiking bag ready. Keep uh, backup stuff so if we have to walk anywhere or go on actual hikes, we have a whole another first aid kit in there. This is our pop-up uh, changing room. This thing is freaking awesome. We went through two of these though because they're not very durable, but they seriously, it's like folding up uh, sunshades for a car. You just bend it over and you turn, twist it and it folds up in second, goes up in seconds, perfect. Um, underneath here is the, uh, the turlet that we still have. The exact same one. It works really well. Can't complain. Put that in the little changing room, works out great. Helio, we still have. We fill that up every now and then, depressurize it, keep it in here so that if it leaks or something, it doesn't leak all over the mattress and leak in the, uh, the uh, Husky liner. So then it, it keeps pretty contained. Still have the same fridge. We run the same fridge uh, almost 24 seven. We put in the four runner to run it there. There's an Alpa cool. If you look right there, 30 degrees. Been running uh, no problem. Uh, what else we got? Um, on the, well, let me show you the one thing that I like. So we went and, uh, on a trip, like we said, and we ended up getting caught in a really bad, um, very windy and rainy storm. And we both got super soaked and it was still storming when it was time to get ready for bed. So we got this handy dandy thing that I keep under here. And it was, it was on Amazon. It's called a truck boot. Uh -huh. So you pretty much blow it up and you stick it in between the window here. Uh, the windows here and you can climb straight through to the back without getting wet You don't have to worry about any weather. You don't have to get outside. You don't have to get cold and you could even put it up and um, if, if you for some reason you your heaters not working or something like that You could leave the windows open and you could run the heater inside and it would heat the heat back there for now for a little bit stuff like that So this thing is amazing. Yeah, truck boot definitely worth it when we had to climb in there We didn't have to worry about getting rained on it was it was pretty sweet. Yeah, I forgot all about that thing um, And then I keep up in here of just drinks um, so like extra sodas, extra waters, anything like that. And then we also always keep a handy dandy little trash bag um, just to keep up with our trash on the trip. And then all of our daughter's stuff um, goes behind the seat. We just stuff it. She has two, two 30 degree sleeping bags um, and um, a travel my pillow. And it's perfect for her, so. Yeah, I didn't mention uh, that yet until just now, but so at nighttime, we both sleep in the, the bed and she sleeps in the back seat. So we take this, unstrap it, you know, we, we put the straps there in case we get in an accident, it doesn't come, you know, kill us all. And we'll unstrap it, put it right there on the center console, and then put the bags up. She's a, a short 12 year old, so we can leave uh, my laptop case, stuff like that over there, and she can still sleep long ways just fine. Um, the other thing we have left is the main driving area. So let me get to that. Changed a couple things here. We do keep this up here as well. Oh, yeah, we do have a jackery. So the jackery comes important uh, when we are done for the night and we still want to use a cell phone booster because with the cell phone booster and the fridge combo together, it gets our battery kind of low. So at nighttime, we'll plug the, the cell phone booster into the jackery and use that. So then we don't have to worry about it. And the, the and then we just leave it up here to charge it. Yeah, and then the fridge itself doesn't kill the battery. Uh, we haven't really tested it how long it would last, but uh, I think it's fine. Um, also, the other thing that I bought was this little thing. It just plugs into your cigarette lighter, and it's like a little inverter. It's a 200-watt inverter, I'm pretty sure it said. Um, it has four USB ports and two outlets. Um, and you can just turn it off by hitting the little power button, so you can leave it plugged in all the time if you want. Yep. Still have the ham. The ham don't use much. We use it for uh, weather radio and we use it for, uh, we, we go and get repeaters 
before we go on a trip in case we need it, in case we break down, in case we're in a uh, place with no cell phone signal, even with a booster. So we can always program repeaters if we need to. Uh, I'll run it on the, the national simplex frequency and do some scans and stuff like that to see if anybody's talking on it. Nobody really uses it, so I don't really use it either. We it's, mostly use it whenever I have one in, in my vehicle. And so when we go places and we both we decide to both drive, like we need a bigger setup or we're staying, staying put for a few days or something and we take both vehicles and we <laughs> talk to each other the whole way through that. Yeah. So the iPad setup is definitely ideal. Um, having a big map to use and having Guy on there on a big map, recording your tracks, all that stuff, and not relying on a cell phone. So I have a cell phone mount there. So the other thing I have is a Garmin inReach. This thing really came in handy. Anytime you don't have a cell phone signal, you want to text somebody, you want weather reports, you want stuff like that. If you ever break down, you have the SOS feature. We go places alone quite often. So if something ever happens and people need to find us, uh, we just do it. We also ride uh, motorcycles, uh, adventure bikes, stuff like that. So we can take that with us on there too. So if we crash or something. So for us, it's worth every freaking penny. I mean, there's a subscription and the upfront cost is kind of high. We also go hiking, you know, all that stuff. So having something like this uh, is just nice. And we use it because um, we have managers and stuff that need to contact us for a business. And they're able to text us anywhere in the world, anywhere they have a clear view of the sky, they can send us a text. So we're always up to date with that too. So that's the whole reason we got the cell phone booster and the, the Garmin. Uh, we, we have to, we don't have a choice. We have to stay in touch with people and they have to stay in touch with us for us to be able to travel and do things. So uh, I think that about wraps it all up. Well, that's it. I hope you guys like it. Obviously you can see that we've been changing, evolving, you know, trying to find things that work, don't work. We went through a lot of stuff. Uh, if you got any questions, let us know. We'll, we'll be happy to tell you about anything we have or any experiences we have with stuff. Uh, if you have any good ideas, how to improve stuff, we definitely appreciate that too. So just let us know what you think. Hope you guys like it. Hopefully get more videos. It's been a year since we posted one, so we'll see. <laughs> we have so much stuff. We just actually got our first hard top rooftop tent and stuff like that. We got the, the trailer and the the uh, forerunner and stuff like that. So we'll try to do more videos. Yeah, and but... the adventure bikes. Yeah. Uh, she's got a Honda. Uh, I've got a Tiger. Uh, so we got all kinds of stuff we're doing. We just don't record all of it. We just do it. So we're going to try to do a little bit better at recording stuff yes. and doing it raw like this instead of all heavy editing and stuff. So if you guys like this style of video, I think we're going to keep with this. If you don't, then we're just really doing it for ourselves too, because it's interesting to see how much stuff changes in a year. Uh, we just went and watched the last video of how we had everything in rigid boxes and a Yakima 10. I mean, it's, yeah, it's crazy. It's, yeah, it's crazy to think of that's how we used to do it. So. Uh, I guess we'll catch you all on the next one, and uh, thanks for watching. See ya.